so hello everyone uh, now i will tell you how to interface this strapo motor with 8051 first uh, you should know very uh, little basics about the strapo motor strapo motor is a widely used device for rotation in uh, various embedded system various consumer electronics various robotic application uh, disk drives printers and so many applications uh, the uh, strapo motor is uh, widely used fine so let us see what does how the stepper motor is, is made stepper motor consists of one fixed rotor uh, i mean one fixed uh, this one fixed stat, uh, stator and a rotor it consists of a stator and a rotor so what is a rotor a rotor is a uh, magnet a uh, rotor is a magnet rotor will contain consist of magnet uh, permanent magnet while the stator will con stator consist of electromagnet which is uh, magnetized by electric current fine and uh, the image which is in front of you consist of four stators 1 2 3 and 4 so when we provide current to this stator this will be uh, magnetized and due to its magnetic field this will be repelled this permanent magnet would be repelled what is this this is a rotor so it will rotate with some angle then we will provide the current to this uh, stator the electromagnet the magnetic field due to this stator will again repel it so it will continue it will uh, again rotate and then this stator will uh, the current in this stator will make it to move again the current then we will provide the current in this stator it will again move so it moves in steps and defined number of steps now we can fix that how much amount how much amount or how, with how many steps we want our rotor to move fine it depends upon the signal which we are giving to these stators fine so uh, stator uh, the rotor uh, the motor comes in varieties it comes it may be having eight uh, stators uh, with five tooth it may have uh, um, uh, four stators but the uh, famous one is four stator one uh, you can see a rotor uh, stepper motor from inside which consists of eight stators fine this is uh, uh, this is a uh, this is a stepper motor for the four stators so uh, currently the first the first stator we are providing current to the first stator fine so uh, it moves a little bit then we provide a current to the second stator so it moves further then we provide current to the third stator it moves further then we provide current to the fourth stator it moves further so this is known as one step movement of a stepper motor this is a complete one step movement of our stepper motor and similarly by providing the current to all the stators continuously when this uh, rotor moves a complete revolution that makes a complete revolution of a stator of a stepper motor fine i hope you uh, understand uh, i'll uh, uh, i'll repeat it again uh, when you provide uh, the uh, current to the first stator then it moves a little bit then we provide the current to the second stator it it moves again in the same direction when you provide the current to third stator it moves again when you provide the fourth stator current to the fourth stator it moves again so this much amount of step for moving this much amount of step we have to give current continuously to these stators one by one fine so this is known as single step of a stepper motor it depends upon the type of motor which we are using it varies between 1.8 degree to 2 degrees for more precise stepper motors which are industrial motors or with the motors which are used in uh, very complex embedded system they can be as precise as 0.5 degrees fine so uh, normally uh, the stepper motor with four stators have a step angle of 1.8 degree that means this one point you are able to produce 1.8 degree fine so uh, you can select n number of stepper motors are available in the market so depends uh, we need not to study this uh, but you should know the number uh, these specifications of a stepper motor the number of steps per revolution 
that means the entire revolution how many steps does a revolution uh, contains for that you sh know you should know the step angle i mean how many such steps this is a single step how many such steps are in a complete revolution for that what should what would should know we should know the this is step angle when we divide it by complete revolution that is 360 we'll be able to know that how many steps are uh, in a complete revolution fine so by dividing with the 360 this with the step angle you you would know the number of steps in a single revolution fine and uh, then this is how we rotate our motor fine uh, we have four stators stator 1 stator 2 stator 3 stator 4 just provide the current just provide the logic uh, since we are uh, s uh, attaching it with a microcontroller a 8051 microcontroller and what a 8051 microcontroller can provide it can provide either a logic 0 or logic 1 through its ports fine so what it is doing uh, we are providing a logic 1 at this stator and logic 1 to this stator also and rest of the stator as logic 0 then we shift it we shift it that this logic 1 is now given to this stator this logic 1 is given to this stator and this stator will remain at logic 0 and this stator was is still 0 now after this what will happen uh, this stator will remain at logic 0 this stator is now given 0 which was initially 1 this stator is still 1 means it is still having the current this is still operating now this is stator which was not operating now it is logic one so it is operating by providing such a pattern of zeros and one you are able to move your motor clockwise if we do the same operation in the reverse direction for example it is one zero zero one now what we'll do we will make this zero and shift this one we will make this zero uh, i'm sorry we'll make this one zero and shift this one downward so what will happen this 0 0 will be shifted up upwards so this is 0 0 and this will become 1 1 now this will 0 will shift downwards so this 0 has been shifted downwards and this 1 1 has been shifted upwards now what is happening your motor will start rotating counterclockwise means anti-clockwise fine so just by providing the data uh, like this to the motor you are able to rotate your motor clockwise and anti-clockwise fine this is the configuration with 8051 you take four bits uh, four ports from any port uh, port p1 has been shown here so you have taken four lines of port one you can take any four lines of any port fine so a driver has been used here see you have to use a driver because instead uh, a, uh, the motor motor needs a particular voltage for its rotation fine and it is very difficult for uh, the voltage which is supplied by the ports uh, to rotate the motor the stepper motor fine so what we do we use a driver we use a driver so driver gets a signal from the 8051 and that is converted to a higher voltage a voltage suitable for uh, stepper motor to operate so it will provide that particular voltage to the stepper motor fine for its rotation let's see the program because we are more focused on the program rather than the construction so we'll see the program first uh, what is the requirement we should write a program for rotation of the motor as clockwise and and or anti-clockwise continuously fine so uh, let's see first for the clockwise direction clockwise means like this we wanted to rotate our motor like this so first we take a value 66 into the 4 bit value it's a 4 bit you can see it's a 4 bit hexadecimal 66 means 4 bits fine hexadecimal 66 means 4 bits so a 4 bit value into the accumulator fine now oh sorry this is 8 bit i'm sorry this is not 4 bit this is 8 bit uh, because it is designed for 8 bit stator this program is for 8-bit stator I'm sorry this program is for 8-bit stator please uh, uh, remember this this program is for 8-bit stator fine now for 8-bit stator you have to take 8-bit value otherwise for a 4-bit stator you have to take a 4-bit value fine 
why i have taken 66 uh, we'll let we'll uh, know uh, when we when we'll see the program take the value 66 into logic into the accumulator then take that value bring that value to the port p1 where you have connected your eight stators because in this example we are taking as eight stator motor so all these eight stator are connected to the uh, uh, the port the various line all the eight lines of the port p1 fine so you have moved to the value 66 to the port p1 fine now you rotate the accumulator this is rotate right accumulator what is this rotate right accumulator because you wanted to do such type of uh, operation clockwise rotation clockwise means this 1100 now it should be shifted in the right direction what we are doing we are shifting this value in the right direction so when this one is shifted here it is something like this this one is shifted here it is something like this and this zero will be shifted here so this zero this zero is here and this zero is shifted here this is rotation in the right direction this is what we have done here rotate the accumulator right fine so what is 66 uh, let me uh, take the help of marker then it would be more clear to you so uh, 66 that means 0 0 1 1 fine so when you right shift it it will become uh, this zero will be this zero will be shifted here this zero will be shifted here and it will become 0 0 1 1 fine and then again you shift it right because what you are doing after shifting it once you shifted it you call a delay subroutine you call the delay subroutine and you jump back delay subroutine means it will produce some delay and it jumps back to this place so whatever is the new value this is the new value this new value is shifted to uh, port p1 this new value is shifted to port p1 and then uh, this new value shifted to port v1 and then again it is rotated fine so it keeps on rotating the values that means it keeps on rotating the stator and you keep that mo value moving to the port p1 fine so that's it this this much is your program your program is this uh, i'm sorry just a minute so your program is this much only uh you have given a value of 66 and then your program look at your program program is of just four lines 1 2 3 4 just four lines because you keep on just what you are doing keep on moving the data to the stator and what kind of data or rotating data since data is rotating so your stator will also be rotating fine what is this this is just this is the delay sub routine which is providing the delay between two movements fine what i have told you in last class is that once you pro move data out of 8051 to a particular unit whether it's a motor or any kind of interfacing device then if you provide the data to it then you should provide delay after providing the next data because the data needs to settle down into that motor or that stator fine so this is the program and uh, i have one more program where we can control the movement clockwise or anti clockwise by just using a switch fine uh, we have seen what was a switch so by just using the switch we can control the uh, rotation of the motor clockwise or anti clockwise how to do it just sense the switch see we have put the switch on to pin number p2.7 fine that is pin number 7 of port 2 fine so we will keep on checking the pin number of port 2 that whether it is set or not what it is jump if bit is set if it is set then please do the clockwise rotation for what we'll do for the clockwise rotation for the clockwise rotation we are doing the right rotation of the accumulator and for anti clockwise rotation what we have to do we have to rotate the accumulator in the left direction c rla what is rla in the left direction so bus just sensing the switch what if the switch is one 
if the switch is 1 then we'll do the clockwise rotation and if the switch is 0 we'll do the anti-clockwise rotation so easy so same program we is implemented in EDSM 51 let's see the simulation this is the EDSM 51 let's see the program I'll load the program I will provide the program to everyone fine so that you people can also do the simulation and practice change the program by yourself modify the program and simulate so this is motor.asm now uh, what provision has been done the same pro uh, in the same program this program the switch is the switch which we have taken is this one the switch which we have taken is let's see which switch we have taken so return in the program we have so it's yeah switch zero so uh, the same switch which was used in this uh, program switch zero we have used the switch zero here see fee switch zero where is switch zero available switch zero is this one these are your switches fine so switch zero what i have done i have connected this switch zero to this pin and this pin will keep on uh, ch uh, checking whether i am pressing this switch or not if i'll press this switch the motor will start rotating in the anti clockwise direction if i reset this switch the motor will start rotating in the clockwise direction fine so let's see it is uh, simulated at 50 units of frequency so let's assemble this and run this so see it's rotating and it's rotating like this it's rotating very fast so i think you won't be able to see whether it's rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise so i'll make it slow a little slower fine i'll pause it and i'll reduce its frequency and then run so now now you are able to see that it is rotating in the clockwise direction fine now i put on this switch switch number zero so now it is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction fine so this is the rotation of the motor what i have done i have changed it clock i have sensed this switch i again press the switch now it became clockwise so it keeps on checking the switch whether it's pressed or not if it is pressed then it will clockwise uh, and uh, anti-clockwise otherwise it's uh, clockwise i have also done with provision you can check in the program that the uh, the number of rotation is displayed on this seven segment display fine one two three four five six seven eight and nine the maximum value which can be displayed here is nine so i have taken it till nine although the rotation is more so that that thing can be done another thing can be done the number of rotations can be displayed on the lcd also fine so you can display the number of rotation into lcd you can also rotate the stepper motor to a specific degree also that's why it is known as stepper motor that modification can also be done in the stepper motor fine so that was about the stepper motor now we'll move to the next interfacing device uh, that is a seven segment display we'll take the second seven segment display fine let's see the seven segment display it's one of the easiest device to connect to the any microcontroller this is a seven segment display why it is known as seven segment c this contains cons this is a seven segment display this consists of seven leds this consists of seven leds this led this led this is a led this is a led this is a led this is a led so what you are doing you just provide the voltage or you just provide the logic 0 or logic 1 whatever is required you just provide the logic 0 or logic 1 to that particular uh, LED and that LED will glow that's it and then you have to make a pattern for displaying either 1 2 3 4 A B C D for example if you wanted to display C uh, small c fine then what you do if you wanted to display c that means this like this like this and like this so c means this led will should glow this led should glow and this led should glow for that what you have to do 
this led is known as led g i will explain you what is this this is these leds are named named by alphabets so this is led a this is led b this is c this is d e f g a b c d e f so all out out leds are a b c d e f in the clockwise direction a b c d e f and g in the middle fine so if you wanted to display c small c like this then this led will glow should glow that means this g led should glow that means the connection is here connection is provided here so you should provide a vo voltage here at g so that this led should glow now this should also glow that means you will should provide a voltage here this should also glow so you should provide a voltage here also fine when you provide these voltages three voltages this will glow and you should you will not provide the voltage to other leds so simple fine so let's see the connection in the logic diagram of adsm 51 is the logic diagram yeah logic diagram is already open so this is the logic diagram let us connect the lcd module uh, no lcd seven segment display seven segment displays it's connected it's connected to port p1 you can see it's connected to port p1 and how it is connected the a b c d e f g fine a b c d e f g i have already told you what are a b c d e f g if you can see a b c d e f g fine so with a magnifier can you see the a b c d e f g yeah these are the a b c d e f g so a is connected to a particular pin of the port let's see where it is connected it's connected uh, yeah it's connected to pin number 0 of port 1 similarly pin number 1 would be connected to b pin number 2 would be connected to c then d then e then f then g and pin number 7 pin number 7 is also connected where it is connected i'll tell you pin number 7 is also connected fine so pin number all pins are connected till pin number 6 it is connected to g pin number 7 you can see the pin number 7 is connected to dot why is it for is it for it is for displaying the dot fine there is a dot in seven segment display for displaying the decimal numbers fine so the the there is a particular led for that dot also so this dot led is connected to pin number seven of port one fine pin number seven of port one so your port one is entirely connected to seven segment display so what you have to do just provide the value to this port just provide the value to this port uh, the pins of the port and this leds will start glowing and it will make a pattern a required pattern fine now i would like to tell you one more thing that there are two types of uh, so there are two types of seven segment display fine one is cathode based and one is anode based this one was cathode based that means already you are giving cathode common cathode means all leds will have a common cathode fine and at the anode you have to supply the voltage then only it will become forward biased and it will glow but the LED which we are using in EDSM51 is anode based. Anode be based means you have already given voltage at its anode terminal. Please listen it carefully. You have already given voltage at the anode terminals. All the anode terminals of these LEDs are common. So you have supplied a common voltage to these LEDs and at the cathode, at the cathode, cathodes are open. Fine cathodes are open open cathode means they are available at the ports fine in the logic diagram also you can see the cathodes are open fine the cathodes are open and at these cathodes if you supply a voltage zero so you know in a forward bias led what happens in a forward bias led how led become forward biased when you provide the low voltage at cathode and high voltage at anode and that LED will glow or at the diode become forward bias and it will glow fine so how to make that LED glow the particular port or the particular pin we should provide logic 0 that particular to that particular pin and that LED will start glowing fine so let's see a program quickly see a program where 
what we are doing in that program I'll let you know yeah what we are doing in this program we are displaying one two three four we are displaying one two three four and five also we are displaying five also fine one two three four five on a seven segment display how to display one two three four five let's see first what we'll do uh, we have set the pin uh, port 3 and 4 fine what are this port 3 and 4 uh, see uh, this port 3 port uh, pin number 4 of port 3 is uh, to enable the display actually what uh, port 3 is doing here because we have connected uh, the entire LC uh, this uh, uh, 7 segment display to port 1 what is port 3 let's see the logic diagram again see we have four different display instead of one display we are having four seven segment display and each seven segment display can be um, uh, what we say can be switched on on switched off using this these lines can you see these lines i'll use a magnifier just a minute just a second yeah so can you see this line this this is what providing the voltage and who is controlling this 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 is controlled I'm sorry yeah this voltage input voltage is controlled by this decoder fine this decoder is controlling that which which seven segment display out of this four seven segment display which uh, seven segment display should should glow fine so how to control the seven segment segment display using a decoder this decoder is a two by four decoder where this two input lines are coming from this two input lines are coming from let's see let's check this two input lines are coming from port number three the th line number the port uh, the pin number three and four of uh, port number three so what we can do I at the port number three the uh, pin uh, the pin number 3 and 4 of port number 3 we can pass the values as 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 fine because these are two two bits so from the two bits there can be four patterns that is decoding so with the these two values you can obtain four values at this output terminals of the decoder that four values will select any one display at a time fine so in the program also we are doing the same in the program also we are doing the same let's see let's see the program in the program also we are also doing the same we are setting the p3.3 p3.4 that means what we are doing we are making it 1 1 1 1 means 1 1 means the display 3 will be enabled what is display 3 the display 3 is this much this one first seven segment is enabled fine if we have put it 0 1 this uh, see this is 0 0 this when these lines are 0 0 it would be enabled then this is enabled for 0 1 this is enabled for 1 0 and this is enabled for 1 1 fine so we have set both the pins so that first seven segments is enabled now what we we are doing we are providing a pattern to the port p1 port p1 is connected to seven segment what is that pattern double one double one double one zero zero one now what pattern it will display let's see on a seven segment itself that would be more clear see what we have given uh, we wanted to display a one we can either the display uh, display one here or either we can display one here fine so uh, we have displayed a one here for displaying a one the LED number F and the LED number E should be at the logic zero please remember this is common anode so for glowing a LED it should provide logic zero we should provide logic zero to it fine so we have provided logic zero to F and E and rest of the LEDs we have provided logic one fine so let's check whether we have done the same in our program also yes 
this is a which is logic one b c d e f f g e and f i'm sorry e and f this is a b c d e so e and f e and f two pins are made as logic zero two pins are made as two leds are made logic zero so what will happen because of this one will be displayed fine now you call a delay why you call a delay all, all the time i have already told you you call a delay because one should remain there for some time otherwise if it works at a speed of 12 megahertz then you won't be able to see with your eye that one has been displayed or not fine so you call the delay then you clear the pin number p3.3 why you have cleared the p3.3 because now you have to enable the second display fine what i have done i what i have done i have tried to display one here two here three here and four here for for that thing what i have to do if one is displayed here then if i wanted to display two then i have to make this display enable how to enable this Th through this two pins so what i'll do i will make it as 10 10 means pin number 3 is already one and pin number 4 is already one so 0 1 0 1 how to make it it is already one so let it be one i have to clear this pin p3.3 so i have cleared the pin p3.3 now your uh, second seven segment is enabled fine now in the second segment if you wanted to display two how you display two you display two like this like this a is a should be glowing p should be glowing g should be glowing e should be glowing d should be glowing something like z fine this is how you display two in seven segment so a should be glowing b should be glowing g should be glowing e should be glowing and d should be glowing so how the pattern should be made let's see a b g e d remember a b g e d a b g e d fine so let's see in the program a b g e d so here what you are doing this is a this is a b then c is not c you are not using d yes d e yes e f and g so you are displaying two fine this you, you start counting from here this is a this is not a fine this is a a because port p1 connection has been done that like that only fine you can go to the logic diagram so this is a then b then c now similarly you uh initiate the display 1 and then uh display 3 on it then you enable the display 0 and then display 4 on it then again for the 5 you can again go back to the display 3 or uh, display the 5 on the same display also you can do the same so similarly you can display the alphabets also or similarly you can display the uh, other numbers greater than 5 also so let's see this program run this program and see this program on edsm 51 fine uh i'll reduce its speed load the program let's see uh seven segment display yeah seven segment display assemble it and let's run it and see what is what is its speed yeah slow 1 2 3 4 and 5 that's it 1 2 3 4 and 5 1 2 3 4 and 5 you can display anything on this seven segment display fine so this is how your seven segment display is being connected to the uh, edsm 51 fine let us continue again and see some more programs some important programs uh yeah one very very easy program see echo the switches i have written a program which is known as eco switches what is eco switches uh, what we are doing we are moving a data from port p2 to port p1 
and simply come back then move port uh, the data from port p2 to p1 what we are doing we are moving the data which is on port p2 p2 to the p1 let's see what is on port p2 what is on port p1 deselect everything and let's see what is on port p1 and what is on port p2 port p1 is connected to if you look closely port p1 and port p2 where is port p2 yeah this is port p2 this port p2 is connected to the switches if you look this port p2 is entirely connected to the switches fine and dot port p1 is connected to the leds bank of leds now what the your program is doing it's a very simple program two line program it is collecting data from port p2 and sending the data to port p1 collecting the port p from port p2 continuously and sending to port p1 so whenever you put on the switch whenever you put on the switch that data will move into that particular port and that particular port which is connected to a particular led that particular led will glow so easy fine it's a one of the easiest program you are just collecting the data from the switches and you are moving that data into the port which is connected to led so what this should do this should uh this should track the switches whenever we we'll, uh put on the switch that particular led should glow let's see uh new i have a ready program here just copy it just copy it control c and then control v the first line should be or0 org 000h and then assemble it it's assembled now you run it now see it has been updated with a frequency of 50 units now it is executing but nothing is showing on these leds these are your leds white color leds but now let's see what happens when i click on this switch this led the led which is connected this is port p1 this is port p2 this is port p1 so what i'm doing i'm sending data from port p2 to port p1 then this switch maybe this switch the switch which we are all leds are having different color so the switch which we are uh, pressing the corresponding led will glow so one of the easiest program fine so this is this was a simple program let's see one more program it's done and then let's see what program i have i have a one very good program of uh, digital to analog conversion see how small the program is how small the program is uh, what i am doing i am uh, using the digital to analog conversion which is already available in edsm edsm 51 this dac digital to analog conversion what it can do it takes a digital value which we supply in the program we given uh, some digital value in the program that is converted into analog and it will be visible on the oscilloscope fine so what i'll do i wanted to display on the oscilloscope uh, a ramp as an electronics engineer you should know what is a ramp so what i am trying to do i am trying to display a ramp on the oscilloscope so how to do that first first enable the digital to analog converter right line fine so let's see where the digital to analog converter is you should know so before doing the program uh you have to see this is digital to analog converter in the digital to analog converter the right line right line means you are trying to write on digital to analog converter it is connected where it is connected to yeah p0.7 fine so you have to 
clear the p0.0 b0.7 because it's a uh, low signal because it's a low active signal so clear the p0.7 that means you are trying to enable the dac now clear the accumulator now move the accumulator data into the p1 look what we are doing we are moving the data a into p1 where is p1 connected p1 is connected to adc let's see again the logic diagram is the p1 connected to adc p1 is also connected to led but it is also connected to adc see uh, the adc i'll switch on the adc yeah adc and lock to no dac sorry we we want dac not adc yeah dac because we are giving dac digital value and want analog value so look all the port 1 is connected to where it's connected to digital to analog converter fine so what we have to do give the digital value from the port p1 and that digital value will be converted into analog form and displayed on oscilloscope it's very easy fine so how to give the digital value first you have given 00, 0 to port p1 fine then you keep adding a particular value to the accumulator fine so what will and then jump to the same location so you keep on adding this is a loop fine so you and uh, uh, a loop which is uh, continuous fine a loop which is continuous so what will happen a will become 8 then 16 then 24 then 36 it's like this it keeps on increasing until until what happens until the limit of accumulator achieved what is the limit of accumulator it's a 8 bit resistor so definitely 8 bit resistor can accumulate a maximum value of 255 0 to minimum value of 0 and maximum value 255 after 255 what will happen after 255 if you add see if a contains 255 and you again add 8 to 255 what will happen if you again add 8 to 255 it will become 7 because 8 plus 255 it will be 7 with carry 1 fine do you understand uh, it cannot be greater than 255 fine so it will resume to 0 simple after 255 accumulator will resume to 0 and then 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 till 255 then again if we increase the uh, accumulator it will again go back to 0 fine so what kind of functionality is it it is looking similar to it is looking similar to a ramp why because ramp is something like this increasing going on increasing 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 and then abruptly it goes to zero then it co goes on increasing 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 up to a limit and then abruptly it goes to zero this is a functionality of ram itself see so let's see on the uh, simulator whether our simulator is able to run in or not load this program uh, where is that program yeah uh, dsc digital to analog converter open assemble run it it's run so let's go to oscilloscope this button look at this button so get to oscilloscope see this is the oscilloscope which is provided with the simulator it is generating ramp signal these are ramp signal you can see increasing and then abruptly reducing to zero then increasing then to zero then increasing then to zero fine so this is your uh, ramp signal starting from this this is zero volt see this is zero volt so starting from here till highest voltage then going to zero then highest voltage then going to zero fine so this is your oscilloscope what you can do uh, I suggest you to do this so that you would be good in programming uh, you try to display a triangular wave which is an increasing ram and then decreasing ram so both should display here an increasing ram and a decreasing ram that will make a triangular wave or otherwise you can also make a square wave fine uh, this i leave this question to you uh, because every uh, simulator every physical uh, device has its own limits can a uh, can a uh, uh, this rectangular wave or a pulsating wave can that type of wave uh, 
can be seen on this oscilloscope i leave this question to you uh, you have to answer this by yourself and then once you are able to answer to yourself you will be able to know uh, that whether it can be displayed here or, or not fine but two things is uh, you can do you can generate a ram and you can generate a triangular or a sawtooth wave on this fine so this is one program let's see i have other programs for you yes i have a program of led pattern what is this uh, the leds on the leds what will happen uh, the leds will glow something like this uh, uh, it will keep counting up to 255 it will use a register that register is uh, i'm sorry it will use a port p1 the, since port p1 is also having uh, a limit of 8 bit it is a 8 bit port so what we have taken all ports what i have told you all ports contain all ports are at high value initially all ports are at high value fine now what you have done you keeps on decrementing the port called delay decrementing dc dc means decrementing the port initially it is ff now it will become fe then it will become fd then fc so it reduces and reduces till 0 0 now again you are in to the same loop so it will again similar to ram it will again be uh, ff fine so since your uh, led your led will uh, will behave just reverse to this as uh, we have seen that your led requires a voltage zero a logic zero to glow fine ff means all are logic one f means 1 1 1 1 fine so all are logic one and because of logic one no led will glow when it becomes f 1 uh, uh, fe fe decrement by one that means fe fe means 1 1 1 1 and 1 1 1 0 1, fine so the last bit is zero so one led will glow so that single led will show that it is value one then after that it will again decrement it will decrement fe to fd fd means d fd f means 1111 and d means 1101 fine 1101 so second led will glow second led will glow that means it's a number 2 so we are decrementing from ff to 0 but with the led it would be shown something like this 0 when no led will glow 1 when first led will glow 2 when second led will glow then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 till 255 look at the beauty of this program such a easier program but what we are doing we are decrement keep on decrementing the port b1 and we are able to display at the led the value from 0 1 2 2 till 255 it's the same value you can pass to the lcd also so that it can be displayed on lcd this i leave to you people you can do this fine so let's load that program pause it reset it load the new program which i've written um what is the name of that program the name of that program is uh, led pattern yeah then assemble it and run it see 001111111101010101010101010101010 so uh, i have this uh, <laughs> so this this way uh, you can uh, see the led are glowing in the form of numbers fine so this is kind of pattern which has been generated you can generate your own pattern i have generated a number pattern fine so uh now we have come to end of this edsm51 simulator how now you have seen how powerful this edsm51 simulator is fine so you can do n number of n types of programming you can uh, interface n types of uh, devices which are already uh, available here and then you can do your own programming with this fine and that is all about this session thank you very much